Um, hello, my name is Margaret, and today I have this grand, great chance to talk with Chris, CEO of Sales Message, about deliverability. So, welcome to Woodpecker Podcast. Chris, great to have you here, and great to have the option to talk about such an exciting thing as deliverability. And it makes me wonder, you know, you're on the side of text messages, I'm on the side of emails, but we have something in common, which is deliverability. So do you still get questions like why you need it or, you know, what is the business purpose of having some knowledge about that? Yeah, you know, look, at the end of the day, if you create a message and that message is not delivered, then, uh, you know, it goes that saying is, you know, did the tree fall in the forest? And so... Um, that's the whole point is, you know, making sure that your messages get delivered. And so from the woodpecker side, you know, you want to make sure that your customers, you know, set up DKIM and SPF records and sender score and all those things that they have to set up in order to get their emails delivered. Because if they don't do that, well, then deliverability is poor and it's not getting delivered and therefore they're not getting value. And so, uh, similar on the SMS side. Uh, deliverability is an issue, right? You're delivering a message. You want to make sure that that message gets through to uh, the end recipient. Um, deliverability for SMS is a lot higher than email. So it's like a 98, 99% um, open rate and deliverability rate to a valid phone number. Um, however, in the last uh, two years, there has been a sort of new regulation being pushed into the SMS space uh, because of SMS as a channel works so well that, well, that brings bad actors. Mm -hmm. So that brings, you know, spammers and people that are taking advantage of SMS. And uh, so the carriers, you know, have really needed to set up a lot of what the email providers and ESPs built for spam filtering and, you know, priority inbox and all these different tools around um, filtering out bad, the bad actors and the bad emails and only really putting through the clean stuff because they don't do that. Well, then their product is not good. And so similar to that is, the carriers, they want their customers to not get spammed. And so there's a new thing that uh, has been, been, been uh, worked on for many years. It's called 10DLC. And uh, 10DLC stands for 10-digit long code. And what that means is before you could send text messages and they would get through. Um, but as bad actors got into it, the, fil the carriers really wanted to filter that out. And so 10 DLC is really very timely. Every business that is doing texting or plans on doing text messaging in the United States has to go through this 10 DLC uh, registration, which really tells the carriers two things. It tells the carriers, hey, here's my business. Uh, here's who I am. And then here are the types of messages I plan on sending through that. And then you go through that process, you get approved, and then you can start to deliver texts. And so before anyone can get a number and they can start sending text messages. And so this is a way to sort of clean that up. Um, but, you know, the best message is that, uh, you know, similar to email, there are spam filters. So you don't want to put, you know, Viagra and all these different keywords, right? So uh, similar to SMS, there are those sort of catches and spam filters. So those messages get filtered out. Uh, if you're including a link in a text message, uh, typically those sort of get filtered out. So there's a couple of things that you got to be careful of uh, in order to get your messages you know, sent and, and delivered. And that's very interesting because, you know, it somehow um, corresponds to what we have in emails because I heard it a lot. You know, email is quite old technology, which gets into quite modern spam filters. So, you know, the, the whole protection sphere gets smarter and smarter. And um, to be able to process it somehow, because of course, if that's the first time you hear, hear, hear about deliverability, that's quite of a big concept. So, you know, to make it more um, understandable, we divide it into the text layer, which is the very basic, you know, your subject line, the content of your message, if you use links, what kind of links and stuff. And this very focused on quality, but you know, it's, it's the first thing you have. Then you have all this yeah. technical stuff like SPF, DKIM, the quality of sender. So, you know, your reputation warming up and, and everything that is related to that. So it makes me feel that it's somehow similar to what you just said, right? So it's not just technical aspect, but it's also what you actually send. Right, right. Totally. I mean, there is the 
first of all, you got to get it sort of set up. And, and 10 DLC hasn't gone live yet. In fact, October 1st is sort of this, um, this shift to where everything has to move over, um, which is that registration process. And then you get to what type of content can you deliver? And so uh, there are some folks that, you know, will go ahead and send text messages uh, to, you know, a group of people or thousands of people expecting that it to get delivered. But the content uh, of that message is being is being filtered. Right. And so, you know, one thing to understand uh, on the SMS side, very similar to email is you have your MailChimps, which are like mass, mm-hmm. you know, newsletter, mass email campaign, sending to hundreds, th- hundreds of thousands in one clip. Uh, on the other side, then you have the cold sort of uh, Gmail, Outlook sort of, you know, conversational uh, messages and emails going out. Uh, it's very similar in SMS. So uh, you have, uh, you know, another company we have, it's called Call Loop, and that's like SMS marketing. Mm-hmm. So, hey, I want to send out 50,000 text messages uh, and typically what that will go through is what's called a short code. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the U.S., it's called a short code. Around the world, you know, each country is unique and different. But the idea is, hey, this short code is really meant for mass texting. Mm-hmm. And you go through the approval process to get that, you know, provisioned and then to send text. And then you have uh, toll-free. So, again, I'm speaking to U.S. and Canada, yep. you know, 888, you know, 844. Uh, those are meant for conversational but also, like, high volume. And then you have um, a local number. Mm-hmm. So this is where sort of 10 DLC fits in. And so uh, a local number was never really built for mass texting. And so a lot of people were using a regular local phone number for mass messaging. Mm-hmm. And that's what sort of, you know, carriers went crazy with trying to handle, oh my gosh, all these people are using uh, these local numbers for mass text messaging. And how do we sort of get a handle on that? And so 10 DLC is sort of this, this idea with that. And so that's, that's really important to understand is, you know, what is, what are you looking to use SMS for? If you're looking to use it for, you know, mass messaging and promotions, a short code will do that. Uh, and the throughput uh, on a short code is a hundred texts a second, mm-hmm. right? So similar to like a MailChimp, Hey, yeah. all those emails are going to go out in an hour, right? Mm-hmm. Um, on a toll free, it's three messages a second. And then on a local number, it's one text a second. So that's 60 texts a minute. Yeah. And so similar to Gmail, you know, Gmail is going to cap it out at 500 a day or whatever it is. And so uh, we actually built a feature um, similar to you, you guys. In fact, you guys were a good model for us for building this, uh, what we call it sort of advanced drip messaging. Mm-hmm. So, you know, hey, we're going to limit it to 50 messages a day. And then the following day, we'll send another 50, another 50, uh, which creates uh, that outcome, which is, hey, I want to engage with yeah. people. I want to engage with prospects. And so, you know, the combination of email from Woodpecker, you know, dripping out those, uh, those conversational emails or right, to get people to book a meeting or to reply. Uh, and then when you can combine it with like an SMS, you know, now you create this multi-channel, multi-modality um, sort of process, right? And you guys have LinkedIn, you guys really built a really cool product there. So, um, so yeah, like uh, hopefully that makes sense, but the local number is really where, the conversation uh, can start to happen. So. Yeah, and it's also very important because, you know, we hear it all the time from our customers that it's, it's cool to sell, send emails. It's, it's very useful. But, you know, if you want to, for some groups, if you want to show that you're really engaged and that you care, there is need of other channel. That's why we have LinkedIn. And um, that's why also, you know, we have this conversation because as we discussed recently, we are kind of perfect match um, because you have very similar approach to deliverability which fit ours because it's like for us it's everything um, to have it on the, on the top quality. But it it's also makes me feel that it's um, a lot to take when you start. So for example, you know, if you're setting up um, your first campaign or you're, you know that you want to get some new clients, you want to do a sale campaign, where you start, let's say you know that you want email and you want text message, but you have never done it. What's the best practice here? Yeah. Um, well, from the SMS side, you know, like any sort of regulating body, um, every country is different, right? But here in the U.S. Uh, in Canada, you know, there's somewhat of a uh, of an opt-in, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's a couple different mechanisms uh, to engage, and really it comes down to a word it's called consent, right? And so how are you getting consent to uh, to message folks and to have conversations? One is 
um, you can have people text you. So, hey, you know, text me directly, ask a, a question, or you know, people can engage with you, and that inbound uh, is a form of opt-in, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so you can have a web form. Somebody can fill out a web form and request a mobile number mm -hmm. and you can engage with them over SMS. And that's the mechanism is through a web form. Uh, there's, you know, all different types of ways from modals that will, you know, click to SMS uh, and, you know, integrations into, into certain tools. And so, you know, the, the outreach for cold SMS, you still have to be careful with that, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, with email, um, I don't know all the, the regulations with that. I know Canada has, you know, can't spam it, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, the one thing to always be uh, careful of is it's a one-to-one -one message, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, when that email is sent, um, you can send that person a one-off text message, right? Um, you can put them into a campaign, uh, but that one-to-one -one SMS, you know, you sort of, creating that template and then sending it very similar to what you do on yeah. LinkedIn. So you sort of preload that, you can shoot off that LinkedIn message. Um, and similar to that, you can do that on sales message. So you can preload that message. We call them uh, canned messages or like a saved reply. And so, you know, during a part of that sequence, you can uh, send that SMS or build it into Zapier and, you know, some of those other, other tools there. Um, and, you know, that, that engagement, um, uh, in our experience, the best way to open a conversation is to ask a question. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you sort of study psychology, uh, you have um, what, what are called sort of open loops. And so if I ask you a question uh, and you don't respond, it's kind of weird, right? And so when you ask somebody a question, uh, so one of the questions you could ask you know, for really opening a conversation is um, one of the things we ask is, you know, hey, are you looking for texting for yourself or for your team or hey are you looking to do x or y and so the best questions are sort of binary like you give mm -hmm. people a choice like are you here or are you there yeah. and then you can engage with them uh, that way and so i think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they treat texting like email mm -hmm. and they'll write a big old thing and then, like that's not the way to use sms and so the same way that you would text your friends well, not, not so much that sense, yeah. but in the way that you want to keep it simple, short, um, we like to call it like tiny text messages can turn into, you know, big opportunities and big sales. So, um, hopefully that gives some insight there. Yeah, sure. And it's also, again, um, I know it sounds like a cliche that, you know, the quality stands for a good business results and stuff like this, but it is to some extent. I mean, I see it all the time and it just proves how much, you know, deliverability is actually the direct effect of your business. Because um, yeah. for emails, as you said about tiny messages, for us, we see a lot of customers struggling with the fact that, okay, of course I want my message delivered and I want result, mm -hmm. uh, business result. But then at the end of the day, it does not mean that the more I send, the more I get, you know, it's important who is my addressee, what I know about the person, and also um, the element, which is kind of related to deliverability, that what I want from that person, if I, I want them to respond, click in a link, or I just want them to acknowledge that I exist because I'll later on send a text message or I'll hit them on LinkedIn or just, you know, do other actions. So it's um, actually, there's a lot of planning to get good deliverability in, in the whole process. And also with emails, yeah. there is this warm up thing um, that I'm not sure if that exists on, also on your side, but for us it's huge. And uh, I hope no one will mind me doing a small sne sneak peek, but we are working on warm up automation for our tool. So hope to get it oh, cool. shortly. Um, but it's always, you know, a struggle that sometimes people assume, okay, I have email and I want to send set ready to go and they forget about the reputation and that you know there's no such a thing like four days warm-up it lasts more yeah. and need more effort and um yeah it's it's kind of you know the challenge that you get at the beginning when you start a new process so do you have like any advice for the person you know who feels overwhelmed with okay i want to do text message i want to do email i want to do everything and i'm lost and i need some help how to automate some things there yeah, um, very good question. So the best thing to start is to start small, right? And so obviously email is that first mechanism. 
Uh, and then over time, you know, you can add in LinkedIn, right? And then you can add in SMS. And so the idea here is um, there's a really great concept, uh, a guy named Jay Abraham coined many, many, a long time ago that I heard about this, he calls it the power Parthenon. Mm-hmm. And the concept with this is, you know, if you look at the Greek Parthenon, it has like those huge columns that are really keeping up the roof. And so, you know, if your business or communication is really built on one channel, you know, there, it's not sturdy. And so that roof is going to fall. And so the idea is how do you stack your columns or how do you stack your channel? So like email, LinkedIn, SMS, right? And so you're really hitting from this, this omni-channel approach. Um, the key is what are people doing? And then what are they not doing? So a good example is you send an email two days later. Well, we're going to send you another one if they don't reply. Right. And so similar to that is, Hey, two days later, if they did not, you know, open the email or click, uh, or whatever other action, uh, you could do in, in uh, woodpecker that could be sort of integrated into Zapier, you could then, Hey, trigger this SMS. Right. And so you could say, Hey, first name, um, you know, uh, notice you're interested in hiring. Um, is this for the, uh, are you looking for someone U S based or remote? Right. And so some sort of like opening question, uh, I get emails all the time. I get cold emails. They all have the you know big long thing yeah. and the bullet points. And I'm like, the best ones are the ones that are like, Hey, um, saw your, your, your hiring. Uh, how's it going so far? Mm-hmm. Right. Super simple, super short, no pitch. And it's just like opening. And so the same uh, response can be used uh, over SMS. Like if they didn't reply, then you can say it over, uh, you know, if they didn't reply in email, you can send it over SMS. Um, so Zapier becomes sort of that glue. Um, we would love to integrate into like your, your builder there uh, over time. But the idea with that is cool. What, you know, if they did not take a certain action, then start this flow. And then that could be an SMS or an outbound phone call or whatever other things with that. Um, one of the things that, uh, we started doing, um, is, you know, when let's say you're sending an outbound email and that action has been taken, we can push that into HubSpot uh, pipeline and that can trigger some other sort of manual automation, right? Mm -hmm. So that could be the phone call that could be this task, you know, and really, you know, add on the, the email automation and other automation, but with also the human sort of automation with it too really, if you want to, to, uh, layer on some of that stuff. So, um, Zapier in this instance becomes the glue to integrate sales message with woodpecker, you know, based on what they do and what they don't do. And that's probably the easiest one to do is, Hey, did they not reply in two days mm-hmm. or three days or whatever? Great. All right. Yeah. Send them a text message during, during these hours, right? You don't want to send a text at two in the morning. So you really want to set that window that, you know, during a regular business hour will, will go out. So. Yeah, definitely. And there is, you know, a lot of impact of making the addressee feel it's not just random because with a lot of cold emails, um, it just feels, you know, maybe not uncomfortable, but you, if, if it's not well tailored, you get this feeling, okay, just someone random texted me something and you don't care. But if it's, as you said, if it's just a simple question of so, or something that makes you feel that the person sending care about what you're doing or the situation or your need, it's absolutely a different story. And, um, you know, it's, it's the content quality that we spoke about just, just a few minutes ago that regardless of the type of communication, you still need to focus on the other side. Uh, so that's, that's just, you know, very um, charming for me uh, because it's just all about people still. And talking about yeah. people, um, we got this question a lot and, you know, okay, I want to send a campaign. And from where I get contacts? So for us, it was like when, you know, in Europe, when GDPR came into force and, you know, with all uh, like legal regulations in the States and in Canada, because we have clients from all over the world, it's always just, you know, a big thing, like from where I can take the data, how to process it, unsubscribe things. And, you know, this kind of management that it's kind of, you know, the administration, but you still have to take care of it. So, um, sure. Do you still, um, or do you get this type of, you know, concerns on your side as well? Like, can I text them when, when to remove and stuff? Yeah. You know, again, similar to email, you know, you have opt outs and then subscribe and sort of that, that whole management side of, uh, of that, um, SMS has that too, or, or at least sales message has that as well. 
uh, which, you know, people can reply stop or cancel or, hey, they could even say something, you know, that you don't like. <laughs> in other words, right? And then you can opt them out uh, in that sort of thing. And so, you know, that, that sort of regulating body is called TCPA, um, Telephone Protection Act. Again, I'm talking America here. Uh, every country may be different. Uh, and so, you know, there's a, a report I made a while back. It's called Getting the Digits. Mm -hmm. And the idea with that is, how do I get digits? <laughs> And so uh, one of the things that, that we can include is, uh, is this PDF, which goes into like 15 different ways to quote unquote, get the digits, uh, you know, everything from having text in everything from doing a Facebook, doing everything from, Hey, doing a podcast, go ahead and text me, you know, at this phone number. Uh, and so all the different ways in which you can quote unquote, get the digits. Now, again, if you're doing somewhat of a, uh, a cold outreach, which is a one-to-one -one, mm -hmm. uh, messaging, um, there's a lot of ways to get, to get those sort of digits, if you will, to get those, those phone numbers. So, um, you know, again, the, the big thing with that is, you know, SMS is, um, is unique in email that there are those regulation side. And so the carriers don't want, Hey, I'm just sending out mass text message spam. And so when you can put yourself in the shoes of the other person and, you know, again, to your point, which is you're dealing with people. And so if there is a tailored message uh, that is personalized, that is one-to-one -one, that, you know, ties back to some sort of action that they're doing, you know, fundraising or hiring, or they posted a new job or, you know, some sort of event, uh, then it makes it more relative to, to your, your messaging there. Uh, and so, you know, I'd imagine you could probably get on LinkedIn, you can go on their website. I mean, there's tons of places um, that if you're building those cold lists, you could probably build uh, the phone list as well. And, you know, we run outbound campaigns for our own customers, right? And so it's not always, hey, I need to go and get a list and then start outbounding for new customer acquisition. It's we actually need to run a campaign for, um, you know, doing beta testing. Mm -hmm. And so we'll use Woodpecker to outreach a sequence of like, hey, we, we're, we're rolling out a new feature. We would like to connect with you. And, you know, we just build out the sequence, we push it in there, you know, we can do an SMS if we choose to, but we're using cold outbound for everything beyond just, you know, cold messaging, but internally for beta testing, for, you know, upsells, uh, you know, for upgrading, for all sorts of different things, because, you know, I don't like the unsubscribe on a Gmail. <laughs> or I, I like the fact that I can send an email from Gmail mm -hmm. versus if I send it from HubSpot, well, then it's, it's a marketing email. And so, you know, leaning into that personalization side of, you know, Gmail and personalization side of SMS, you know, you get the, the both of, uh, of best world. So I think, you know, again, you already have the customers, you can start to engage with them and use outbound uh, Woodpecker and sales message on, on all sides. So, yeah, it's um, on our side is like, we got a lot of questions like, okay, so should I collect all data myself, like manually, or should I use some kind of automation? Or I don't know, there are other ways, like there are agencies who do prospecting on behalf of, you know, your company or for you. And the question is, what's the best option? And to be honest, you know, of course, there may be some preferences, that's perfectly fine, but it's all about how much you can control that. There is, you know, right. the question is, do you really can have you know the size of, of the list and you can say okay i know how to personalize this because come on having first name in the email is not the personalization that you know you expect to get something meaningful from the other side um, because it's right. yeah it's quite of a sacrifice to ask for i don't know 10 seconds of your time just because i know your name it's to some extent it's just not enough and i know it sounds right. brutal right. but on the other hand each of us gets tons of messages that we don't want. So, you know, we also appreciate the other side of deliverability. Um, but yeah. we also recommend a lot to, to the people that you should think through about the group that you were touching upon and, you know, what actually is the value that you are giving to them and make sure that they even understand because sometimes, you know, when we prospect and then we, okay, so just boom, let's put it into Woodpecker, let that then send message. We just skip the element of analyzing what is the, maybe not offer because it sounds really, you know, sales wise, but it's yeah. um, what is the what is the thing that we have there to share? And um, somehow, if you think from this angle, it gets easier um, because if you think about them, you know, as people, not just as a group of random emails to send, um, 
you make the process, you know, step by step to some extent. So um, yeah. on the side of prospecting, I don't believe that there is just one good source, but there are definitely good practices to follow. And yeah. um, talking about good practices, because I've learned that learning good practices is usually through making bad practices on our own. <laughs> so right. do you have, yeah. you know, top two of things that you never should do when you try to do text messaging on a scale? Yeah, you know, I sort of mentioned it a little bit earlier, which is, you know, SMS is a channel that's in your pocket. And so I think the biggest mistake people make is they treat it like another push marketing tool. Uh, and in reality, you know, uh, depends, right? Short code, long code, if the idea is engagement, super teeny tiny texts, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things we do for like a meeting for like, a, a, you know, if you do any sort of meeting or demos or scheduling or anything like that, you know, at the end of the day, if somebody doesn't show up, that's a gap in your calendar. And so it's like, how do you reduce no shows? And so one of the best texts that we send is like one hour before we just use mm -hmm. uh, Zapier and HubSpot for this one hour before that meeting, we just put, Hey, first name, are we still on in an hour? Mm -hmm. Right. Like if we went to lunch and, and, you know, we went at noon, I would probably text you in the morning and be like, Hey, Margaret, are we still good for lunch? Today? Yeah. And you'd be like, yes or no, I need to reschedule. And so it just sort of puts that onus back on them. Um, but you ask a question, if it was a statement, mm -hmm. then it ends. And so there's no like, you know, going forward. So those simple like text messages are the most effective. And so you don't need to write a book. You don't need to write bullet points and have 80,000 emojis. Keep it super simple. Those are the best messages. Now, the other thing is really to look at the life cycle of a customer. And so, right, you have prospecting, um, you have lead generation, uh, you have um, appointments. And so how do you reduce no-shows? You can add SMS as a reminder to drive them. If you're doing a webinar, mm -hmm. using SMS as a reminder to drive attendance. If you get more people to show up, you'll therefore make more money and more revenue from that. Um, everything, you know, from getting reviews to upsells to driving more appointments to sending promotions. And so, you know, SMS plays a huge part in every part of that life cycle. And so the key is, huh, well, how can we, how can we use SMS as a, as an extra lift or a, an initial engagement, mm -hmm. um, uh, to start there? So, you know, I would say people come in for one thing for SMS. Uh, but then there are so many other applications mm -hmm. for that. Um, one of the cool ways people do it is lead qualification. So it's a really great story. Uh, one of our customers, he, uh, he was having people book on his calendar mm -hmm. and he was filling his calendar with all these calls. Uh, and he would show up and spend 20 minutes and come to find out they're not qualified. And so he spent so much time hopping in meetings with people that weren't qualified to buy his five or 10 or $15,000 uh, training. And so rather than sort of going through that and getting an SDR and call the SDR calling them and the person not picking up and then playing phone tag. And then, you know, that whole game um, after they filled out that Calendly request, they outbounded a text message mm -hmm. and that text message engaged into, Hey, thanks so much for filling this out. I mean, we have a guide on this. Um, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions to make sure that it's a fit? Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. And so then it just goes through this qualification of awesome. You know, uh, you know, is this something you're interested in doing now? Right. Is this, uh, do you have the budget? You know, all these questions yeah. that go through that and that alone took, uh, <laughs> you know, he was doing all these calls and like, you know, maybe getting one sale a week. Yeah, and no he started to qualify and virtually like doubled, tripled his business overnight just by adding that. Mm -hmm. And, and he worked less. <laughs> and so it's like all those little things that, you know, can help you get to that engagement, um, is a great way to, again, like minimize the business, make it easier, simplify it, uh, and texting. You don't have to learn anything. Mm -hmm. Like you know how to text. <laughs> Everyone knows how to text, but it's just, what's the right message to, uh, to send. So, yeah, that sounds very meaningful for for you know how to keep it up uh, focused on on you know on the goal and on the person and um yeah, yeah from our side maybe i'll st start less focused on the person but it's very important with email deliverability it's know the technical side i know it sounds boring yeah. and majority of people are like oh my god really like i'll have just ignore that maybe it will work it won't work 
the, well, it's the beauty of that for me. And it's also, you know, that it's, um, that you need to show that you care. It's just as you show that you care with the content, you also show that you care with the technical aspect. So you need to have SPF and DKM and we will, there's no need to discuss that. Also with warm up, yeah. you may believe that you will buy um, a young domain and then you will set up a new email and after four days you will be good to go. But it's not true. You will be good for one week or for two weeks and then you will have the like long and very painful process of restoring your reputation. So never ignore technical aspect because it's there regardless of uh, if we like it or not. And the second yeah. will be quite similar to your. So, um, make sure that you are not wasting someone's time because people will not hit spam button on you in you know inbox saying like hey i don't want to see this message anymore and of course gmail analyze or not only gmail yeah. but in general email providers analyze the engagement so they know how much you spent on the message if you come back to it if you respond you know or you just see the headline and okay let's remove it so um yeah. Make sure that you care enough for someone else to care about what you're typing. Yeah. And um, right, right. yeah, I think that the good side of that, even though it may sound difficult, is that if you are doing text messaging now and you're doing it in a good way, most likely emails won't be that much hard for you. And the other way around, if you can, you know, get engaged into the email approach, I'm not talking about technicalities, but just approach you will be probably making great um, text messages campaign. So, you know, probably if you're doing something right on either side, you're halfway to do the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think to follow up on your point too, which is, well, what are the right emails, right? What's a good email? What's a good response? So one thing I've done just through the years is I have a folder and it's called made me click, <laughs> right? Or maybe reply. And so it's like those good, like as you're going through your day, there are those emails you're like, that was a good email. Like, wow, it made me want to reply, right? And so just sort of logging that, building a swipe file um, for when the opportunity comes up that, hey, you know, I want to I want to do something. I found a really good tweet. It was from the CTO of Shopify. Mm -hmm. And it was a tweet that said, like, hey, what's the worst thing about Shopify? Mm -hmm. uh, let me know, and blah, blah, blah. And he had thousands of responses. Well, guess what? I did. Well, we automated that. <laughs> <laughs> so as a part of our process for, like, I want to get feedback from our customers. And so what we do is like 30 days later, um, or you know, I forget what it is, 30 to 45 days later, we just outbound this email that says, what's the worst thing about sales message? Mm -hmm. And then in the copy, which goes through Woodpecker, which is through Zapier, um, we just say, hey, you know, what's the worst thing about sales message? I can take it, just let me know what we can do to make it better. And you wouldn't believe the responses people, people get, because then they give you real feedback versus what can we do to improve our product? Yeah. No, that's not going to work, right? So it's like it's 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 talking the way people talk. You know, copy is so, so important, uh, and so you know, keeping it personal because you ask a question like that, people are going to tell you. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you want, that's exactly what you're going to get. So you know, it's uh, it's creating these swipe files. You know, that's a great email. Guess what? We're going to use that forever because it works so well. Yeah. And so it's like creating a swipe file of all these different things to integrate into your business. Like what's a good email to get reviews, right? That's similar to that. That's not just your typical boring, mm -hmm. you know, go to a blog post and copy yeah. paste like a review email, you know, like what's the one that's like going to be a good review. And so, you know, over time you start to, uh, start to build that stuff. So, um, hopefully that, you know, for everybody out there, build a swipe file, what made you click, what made you reply? And, um, uh, that alone will help you. Yeah. Write better copy. Actually, I know what I will do now. <laughs> it's a great idea and it's, it's always good to collect an inspiration. So, so that's a good one. That's a good one. Thanks. Okay. I think that um, we took some time already, so not to make it too long. Um, that was great to talk with you and the topic is awesome. So I hope for all of you listening to this one, I hope you don't get bored and I hope you learned something or just reassure what you thought beforehand. Chris, thank you very much. That was great having you here. Margaret, thank you so much. I love Woodpecker and uh, you guys are doing awesome work. So appreciate you. Same back. We love sales message and happy to have you here. Yeah. Okay, guys. So thank you very much for being here with us. I hope you enjoyed because deliverability is just awesome topic. So remember to be here with us for the next ones. And I hope you enjoyed Woodpecker podcast.